Welcome to Contemporary Black Voices, where we take on the most pressing issues confronting black America. I am your host for this show, the writer Fred, and with me are Professor and Dr. Sharon Michael Chadwell, national best-selling author Caleb Alexander, and businessman and community leader Chris Dawkins. We have now entered the month of February and the beginning of Black History Month. It was in 1926 when Dr. Carter G. Woodson designated the second week in February as Negro History Week. He chose February because it was the birth month of both President Abraham Lincoln and the great abolitionist Frederick Douglass. It was first celebrated as Black History Month at Kent State University in 1970 and finally given official designation by President Gerald Ford in 1976. One of the most pressing questions regarding the history behind the designation is when do you begin the research? Do you go back into African history or do you begin the research at the time our ancestors went through the infamous door of no return? Or is it at the bottom of the slave ships as they made that deathly journey over the middle passage to this country? Finally, does the research begin once the Africans landed on the soil of this country? Exactly when should the study of African American history begin? That is the question we plan to discuss. And I'll kick this discussion off with the statement that the history of black or African American history, whichever you prefer, should begin once our ancestors were forced through the door of no return. Africa became a lost memory and America a new history a new history, a lost memory, <laughs> a new history. <laughs> Caleb, okay. go ahead. Okay, so, no, um, again, so are we, uh, if we're discussing Black History Month, uh, that does encompass African history, African-American history, Afro-Caribbean history, Afro-European history uh, in, in, uh, in terms of Black History Month. But if we're talking about uh, the teaching of, of, of Black history, or African American history, uh, period. Then I think that that does need to be grounded uh, with with a, a, a lesson in, in African history. So, uh, just for example, and 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 like my sister had a previous show where she where she talked about food, and so uh, part of African American history is the culture of food, and so you have to teach the kids how the people that came over well, they had rice that they had wound in their hair. So they have to understand where that comes from. The other traditions of, 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 of the food that we eat or the music, you know what I mean? Uh, the, 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 our love of percussion, our rhythm. And so there, there, there are things that did come over that, that did translate to, uh, to African-American culture. And so you have to, again, you have to ground um, that culture and let the kids know. It's, it's important that they understand that their history did not begin uh, as, as enslaved people. Uh, they have to understand uh, that, uh, again, it has to have that, that African foundation to it. And that's my opinion. Okay. Yeah, they just, she <laughs> rolled those eyes, and she looked over at me like, there, take that. There, take that. Caleb, Caleb, Caleb <laughs> laid you out. Caleb <laughs> did good. <laughs> did I do good? Yeah, you did good. Too. Oh, that's just as a second thought. But I want to say this yeah. within the context of a caste system, okay? Uh, the dominant group wants to control the amount of knowledge those groups that they have decided comes under them, mm -hmm. take in. And, our, and they want us to think, they want our kids to think that our history started solely on the plantation, solely in the slave ships. And that's not true. I think that our kids, I'm saying kids, because I'm an I was a former elementary teacher, and okay, I did some things in that classroom that today would be hard for CRT in terms of what the dominant group would describe, <laughs> okay? But there's all, well, I talked to a lot of my black teacher friends, and they did a lot of quiet instruction, which Dr. Gar uh, Jarvis Garvey of Harvard, would uh, uh, Gibbons, would describe as fugitive pedagogy, where it wasn't so much out front, but it was integrated in a way to where the kids, I'm saying the kids, and even adult learners were learning stuff. Like, for example, this is Black History Month. I had just all the major boards covered with Black history, but I also, on those boards, would have like images of African kings, queens, and people, you know, warriors on those boards so the kids can see the connection between who they are now back to 
the African co uh, continent. And so I believe that the, it's a necessity that our, that our kids understand the context under which our people came here in the United States. Again, the Dominic group wants us to think that they taught us how to do all these skills. Mm -hmm. You know, well, that's not true. We had, you know, we had people in the, in the bottom of those ships who were skilled architects, who were skilled doctors, who were skilled warriors. So the context needs to be understood that we didn't just come over here dumb. We came over here kidnapped and intelligent. Okay. Before you go to Chris, yeah. slavery did not benefit black people. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, th there's a lot of things for me that uh, is just exploding my mind on this conversation. First of all, uh, I just wanted to make a comment that Kent State is in Ohio. So yeah, in, yeah. in case folks don't understand. And there's a lot of good things that, I shouldn't say good things, but there's a lot of uh, historical things that happened in Kent State mm -hmm. because that's where the first four uh, four dead in Ohio talk you know came about against the Vietnam War. Right. Yeah, but as we talk about Black history, African American history, and African history, uh, in your opening statement when you talked about uh, Black history basically starting in 1970. At that time, no, 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 not uh, the term black history, the okay. use of the word black. Yeah. Okay. Before yeah. that was Negro history. Okay. okay. But my point was, or is, there was at that particular time, nothing called African American history. Okay. Okay. So right. everything at that time was referred to black, but as Sharon talked about, as the oppressors allowed us as we began to learn more and i shouldn't say allowed but w as we began to learn more we only learned about what happened while we were as slaves we didn't learn about anything that happened as africa and white folks or our oppressors began to make these movies like cleopatra where they would say that uh white people were the ones who were from uh, 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 Egyptians and different things like that, which is further from the truth. So until we had the chance to really explore on our own and find out what it really meant, once we began to explore to find out that we had a history that began before slavery, then only then could we begin to understand what had happened to us and how our history did not begin at slate. So I'll stop there. Okay. Uh, is, um, it, yeah, sure. Go ahead. So when you start thinking about the history of, of, of black people in the United States, it is laden with a lot of systemic racism. And so one of the, you know, when you start applying critical thought to what's being presented to us, then you start having those questions like, so why would the white man who had all these slaves that they purchased design the, the uh, cotton gin? You know there was probably a couple of black men, you know, sitting you know, in the evenings trying to figure out how to uh, pull that cotton quicker. Why <laughs> would a white man who has all these slave women design the ironing board? There, you know, there were some black women who came up with that ironing board. Now, we're not going to talk about churches, I mean, Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know, we already know that Colonel Sanders stole that recipe from that black woman. We already know that. But when we start applying critical thought to what we're learning, that, to, the, to the information that is pushed on to us by, by the oppressor, and you will realize there are some gaps here that need to be further investigated. And so I really do love that now that the social media is loaded, especially now, is loaded with truth about our history. Let me ask you a question. Is, is the Harlem Renaissance part of uh, African history? 
It is. It is. The Harlem Renaissance is a part it, of African history. It, 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 it took it, place it, in Africa? No, it took place here. So by what are who? you saying? Uh, by African Americans. Part of African history? So it's part of African history. <laughs> it's a, is the Civil Rights Movement a part of African history? It is. Is um, let's see. Uh, you take a lot to the jungle. He's still alive. Yeah. Well, that's that's not necessarily so. After enough, after enough, <laughs> after, wait a minute. Let me finish. After enough generations, mm -hmm. that may change. That may change. The African, the international African slave trade ended in the year 1808. So most of the they needed slaves for the South. They were bred on um, South Carolina mm -hmm. and breeding farms, North North Carolina and South Carolina, Maryland and Virginia. So you've had what now 1808, 200 and something years oh. of blacks being separated from Africa. But, but so we're still dependent on Africa. Are we still dependent on Africa? Blacks. Are we still dependent on Africa? We should be. We should be. That's not an answer, are we? <laughs> we, we? We should be. We should be. We should, we should definitely uh, be making those connections. We should definitely. Let me, the, 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 world, the world is dependent on Africa. The, the entire okay, I'm not, I'm not, is dependent on That's not on you. Come on, Africa. Caleb, you're better than that. You know that's not what I'm talking no, about. I'm saying, you know darn well that's not what I, I'm talking I, about. Yeah, but you can't separate it. You're trying to make a separation uh, that, that... Because there is a separation. None of you want to accept the fact that there was a separation. They did a terrible job. Who's that? It, uh, the oppressor. Okay. In breaking in breaking what we had from Africa. Let's say the four of us were in the same cabin. They would make sure that we didn't speak the same dialect or Swahili. They wouldn't allow us to be a part of any tribe. They broke it off. So what we had to do, and not I don't talk about those cotton fields. Uh, that's, how, that's how they tried to teach it to us, that we're out there picking cotton, okay? We were doing things between nine at night and five in the morning. And it was a culture built on survival, strength. I, I and agree. I resent everyone who wants to overlook that period mm -hmm. and what those black people were able to do, our ancestors, mm -hmm. and survive. And they right. built a culture it was, based it was, on it was, that. It was black people building another black culture. Well, African, yes. African culture is not a monolithic thing. There are many cultures in Africa. And ours is and the not, culture And the culture that was not, built here by black ours people is, not is based, one of those cultures. No, it's not. Which one? Whichever one Which you talk one? about. And it was made okay, created you, you by black come, folks. We all come from different parts of Africa. And so one of us was dominating? Yeah. I, I, they, I, I, think, I think the movie um, with Kunta Kinte, Roots. The, Roots, the scene where he chopped off mm -hmm. his foot mm -hmm. had symbolic meaning. That was breaking the connection to Africa. Well, and, it, and, and it worked. Didn't it work with Conte Kinte? Yes, it did. Every generation after that, you start to lose uh, what came from Africa. And what they did is they built something else. And I don't know why so many black people are ashamed of what they built no, that you have to go no, back. I okay, didn't, we I didn't go hear anybody say that they were ashamed of that. Well, okay. What I'm saying is it was, a, your point? it was a culture that was built by black people, so it's still relevant. Okay, yes, sir. Can you hold your point? Yes, sir. Because it's time to take a break. Okay, okay we'll take a break here at Contemporary <laughs> Black Voices, and we got a great conversation going on. We'll be right back.